Welcome to the Amgen Biotech Experience Program. My name is Alia Katarna, and I'm the Site Coordinator for ABE Massachusetts. Today, we'll be discussing the ABE Colony PCR Lab. PCR stands for Polymerase Chain Reaction. It's a fundamental tool in molecular biology, in biotechnology, but could also be found in hospitals and now aboard the International Space Station. PCR allows for the amplification of a target region of a specific genome, whether it's the human genome or its plasma DNA. If you're interested in making billions of copies of a specific gene, like RFP or the gene for insulin, you would utilize PCR. In order for PCR to work, you need a few key components. You need your template DNA. In this case, with colony PCR, we're going to be using bacterial colonies as our template DNA. We're going to need primers, and these primers are essentially molecular post-its that would anneal at the beginning and the end of our target region, which in this case we are looking to amplify RFP. You need a TAC polymerase, or you need a DNA polymerase that will allow for the synthesis of the new strand. And there are other things that go into PCR. But specifically with this lab, we want students to understand how PCR can be a fundamental tool in what they've already learned. With the ABE Colony PCR Lab, students are going to utilize the plates that they created during Laboratory 5. On the arabinose plate, students will see, or should see, colonies that are expressing RFP. These colonies will be red in color. Utilizing PCR, though, will help us verify that the plasma that we either created during Laboratory 3 or the plasma that we were provided during Laboratory 2A is indeed the plasmid that was taken up by these bacterial cells. What do I mean by that? Well, during Laboratory 5, students physically see that their plasmid was taken up by these E. coli cells. They're expressing RFP, they're red, they're glowing, they're growing even in the presence of an antibiotic. So they're visually, they can confirm that their bacterial cells took up the plasmid that has the gene for RFP as well as the resistance to an antibiotic gene. But how do we utilize PCR to verify this? If you were looking to make and mass produce a therapeutic protein that doesn't necessarily have a visual component, how would you confirm what you have is truly what you have? And PCR is the answer. So for this colony PCR, students will take up a pink colony from their plate from lab five and PCR that and compare that to a white colony in which they also pick up from a plate from laboratory five. So the white colony may not have the RFP gene. However, the pink colony should have the RFP gene. And this will be visible after PCR when you visualize your products with gel electrophoresis. There are different types of PCR machines or thermocyclers that you may receive. This one is a traditional thermocycler. It allows for students to load their samples and will run accordingly, fluctuating temperatures between 94 degrees to about 50 to 65 degrees, depending on your annealing temperature to your primers, and finally, your extension temperature, which is around 72 degrees for your polymerase. Now, when students use a thermocycler like this, it's a set it and forget it sort of deal. They load their samples, they close their lid, and they go on with the lab. However, there are new PCR machines out there. And this is the mini PCR machine. The mini PCR machine does exactly what this PCR machine does. It changes the temperature over time, which is all what PCR is. We have that initial denaturing. We have then the annealing stage. And then finally, we have the extension stage. This is a newer PCR machine. It's called the mini PCR machine, and it does exactly what a traditional thermocycler does. It fluctuates temperature and goes through the three cycles of PCR, your denaturing stage, your annealing stage, and then your elongation stage. Now, one of the reasons why this unit is so small is because the brains, the programming, actually happens on your computer. What's great about that is the program actually has an animation with it. So it starts to sort of demystify what PCR actually is. PCR is inherently a black box or an 
off-white color box. But essentially, students put their samples in. They may theoretically know how PCR works, but it's always nice to have an animation showing the students what's happening in the tube exactly when it's happening. Although PCR is important in molecular biology, forensics, even medicine, it's just as important for your students to be introduced to PCR at the high school level. And the Amgen Biotech Experience Program does this.